Great, that was wonderful. Uh, nice sound, nice direction, uh, good intonation, uh, nice overall arch to the piece. So what did you think? I always like to know what the player thinks. So what were your feelings? If you were sitting in the audience, what would you think? Playing. You're playing, yes. You think you want to be more free with it. Yeah. So what stops you from doing that? Um, so I think my line is so long. And Your line is so what? Long. Right. And I think so fast. So you're, are you, do you mean that you feel that you're just concentrating on the line and you can't be free? I see. Okay. Anything else? Mm. <laughs> well, if, if that, I think that if that is the case, then how do you practice? I mean, if you're thinking, okay, all I'm thinking about is the line, but I want to be more free, is that when you practice the same way? Yes. Okay. So whenever I have a problem, I try to solve it, of course. So how do you try to solve an issue like that? Is it that you're forgetting to be free, or you don't know how to be free, or, or wh what is stopping you from being the, as free as you want to be? I don't know how to. You don't know how to, to, be, to free it up. Um, can I try your viola? Yeah. So, wow, this is a very loose bow. You might want to, can I tighten it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Wow. Um, if I were, wanted to be more free, uh, for me, my problem is I'm too free. So I never, I want to be the less free. So I think I'm pretty good being free. So... <laughs> What, what I would do is I would experiment, that's all. You know, when you're practicing, if you just say, okay, I'm just gonna play through this piece three times, maybe slowly once, and then up to temp medium, and then up to tempo, that may help you be, get comfortable with the piece, but it may not solve all, any issues you have. So I, I would just experiment, so how, how free do we want it? Or there, there are many ways you can play anything. So for me, it would be a matter of just experimenting with it and seeing what I like. And of course, this tune happens many times, so you can change it up. For me, I like to write things in my part, especially when I don't remember. So I would just write whatever is going to inspire you to make to do those free free things. I would write in the part because then you can practice them and not forget them as you're you're uh, working. So, as I said, it was excellent playing that I heard. When I I just wonder the character. Besides the freedom issue, how would you describe this piece if you had to describe it, the character of it? Um, I, think, um, I think about the faster one. Okay. And the light. 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 
Okay. I, when you played, I could have used more of the light stuff. I felt it was maybe, for my taste, uh, quite serious. And to me, there's some humor in this. I think Rager's sense of humor may not be my sense of humor or your sense of humor, but it's his sense of humor. And we've got to highlight that there's a piece you can listen to for flute, violin, and viola. It's a serenade by Rager. You should listen to it. It's a very silly piece. Just to see how silly Rager can be. These pieces, oh, these pieces are like etudes somehow. And it's trying to make them sound like great pieces. Nothing against you, Max. They're great pieces. But do you know what I mean? We want to make this as great as possible. We, every piece we want to make, is, we want to help it as much as we can. As a matter of fact, I judged the Munich competition years ago, and everybody had to play Rager. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is, this is going to be tough just to hear that. And, but it was very interesting because the people who really made it turn it into music, you know, getting away from that etude thing, those were the people like, oh, they've actually made this rather sort of like this piece into something more, it seemed like more than it was. And it's not that easy to do, but what I would be thinking about is, you know, I, I hear the different characters when you play, but I would like to hear more of them. So isn't this sort of fun, this beginning? Is it fun? You know, when, when you played, I, I wanted to hear more fun. So how do we make more fun? It's not like we, like when I play something sad, I don't have to be sad. <laughs> when I play something fun, I don't have to be happy, but I have to pretend. You know, we're like actors. So, so how do we, how am I going to act to make this seem like I'm having a lot of fun here? I'm going to pretend here. So, um. So what did I do? What, why? It seems sort of fun, right? So what was it? Now, I'm going to play it now a little uh, less fun. Let's see what the difference. So what was the difference? Hmm? It was the, the release of the notes and how, how I was releasing the notes and I was, I was more free, as you were saying. So look how I'm releasing. See how I release things? And I'm also thinking about the line. So why is that more fun? Because the harmony here... And then, brilliant. Well, not brilliant, but he changed the harmony, so it's, it's sort of fun. So we, what we do is we point it out. So You know what I mean? So it's how I'm releasing the, the, the notes and the making sure I'm, I'm pointing out the phrase and I'm trying to point out the harmony. So... In most pieces, we want to bring out harmonies because we the people in the audience want to understand the piece as much as possible. And they're going to hear the harmony changes, but if we, if we have a little bit like... Oh. So if I go... 
it means something more. It's like, oh, it's like in a pop popular song. They're in one key, and they, they're bringing out that change, and that's what we have to do. So another thing I was noticing was your slides or shifts, whatever they were, what, wherever they were, I was wondering if sometimes they were too much. Because for me, the rule is if I make a slide, I want to make a beautiful, gorgeous slide. If I make a shift, I don't want anyone to hear it. If I can get away with, sometimes we can't avoid hearing the shift. But if we hear a so, So I, I work on my slide. It's too too much. So something like that. Christ so well. I'll do a slide like that. But when you do the slides, I sometimes where were you shifting? Just point out a shift to me. Here. There? Right there, is it me? No? So where? To there. So the question like there is that is pretty easy to hide because we have a bow change. So the question is, do you want a slide? For me, I'm not sure it's adding much to it. So I would think about every time you're shifting or sliding, do I want to hear it? Some of them, yes. But some of them, you may say, well, what if I lighten up? See, to make a light slide, if I want to go... So I'm not going to go... Because what I'm doing is I have a very light left hand for the shift. And also, my, my uh, shifts are like this. I go like that. I, I would never go boom, boom, boom. I'm always trying to make, make it as easy as possible. And I'm also lighting up my bow. You see how I lighten up the bow? So just to think about those. I would just think about this. So just play the opening. Uh, and let's think about the release of those notes to have as much uh, humor as possible. Okay, so let's try something. Do every short note up bow. Oh no. Up. And up. Okay, you stop the ups. Okay, so I'm not saying you should do that bowing, <laughs> of course. You should do your bowing, but it should have that kind of release. It, it feels a little bit like you're saying, oh, listen to this, da dum bum bum ba. It's sort of like this. And I don't 
Okay. I like this much better. I don't know how you feel. Good? Okay, let's hear some, some of the shift slides. So where's, where would you start doing that? Is it like there? Or... That, where is that? Uh, yeah, so I'm hearing the shifts, and you're also making this very important, you know. I know there's a crescendo, but this is a, I don't think it's a, such a fun part that I want to hear so much. It's piano. I feel a little bit that you're going to like listen to this. I, you know, it's like when you speak, certain words are very important. Certain words, yeah, are not so important. You know, it's just it's the same thing in 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 music. That what's important. Da 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 da. Basically, that maybe you know what I mean that. Not everything is equally important and needs to say, look, everybody. Some of it you can you can relax a little bit. Just start there. Da da dee da da da. Okay, I like that better. It's just, I am hearing a... Whatever the fingering is. I, I wonder that those are not necessarily beautiful. They sound like shifts to me. So do you think you can hide, hide some of them a little bit more? Just do there from the da-da-dee-da-da-da. Like there, like this when you go. It, it's like, is that, you know, I, we have different, everyone has different tastes. So do you think this is beautiful? Not that everything has to be beautiful either, but you know what I mean? You have to decide when you're playing, is that, is that kind of slide or shift something I want to hear? It's not for me to decide, it's for you, because you're the one who's playing. So those are the things as you're practicing. I'm like, like well, well, do I like that? Especially because it's on a bow chain. You don't have to hear it at all. Just do that. Just go, stop. See what I hear? See, you're, you're, you're making the noise, uh, you're holding on, you're going da da bum. So wait to shift. Just do that. Okay, and now it's shorter and shorter space. See, that what we have to do in that split second, I have to go there. See how I got that? It, I'm doing it right when I change the bow. Because if I do it early, or if I do it late, I'll hear noise. I'm also, you can cheat if you want. You see, look at my bow. I, I'm cheating by lifting up the pressure on my bow. Good. Yeah, and also, I think my hand is moving quicker. Look how quick I'm going. 
Good. So now just do it from there. Same spot. Okay, so there, as I said, I would listen to all your shifts and slides and say, oh, I like that one. Not so sure about that. Like, you know, not sure, for instance, about that. Maybe, you know, you're the one who's playing, so you have to decide. It's da 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 da. Part of this, like, how, how would you sing it? Would you go da da wa da 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 da? That's nicer. So you go. Okay, it, it, it's also that you go. Do you know what I mean? Like, blah, blah, blah. And you also have to decide if you want to do that. For me, do you see how much bow I'm doing? Shifted both ways. Oh, wah, wah. Maybe that's too much. Do you hear? Do you hear what I hear? Okay. So uh, I like it better. What does that say? I can't read that. More bow. Yeah, more bow. I see. Okay, let's hear that from there. Okay, so can you make this the most fun thing you've ever played? So how are you going to do that? No. Uh, one more time. So maybe there's no... And part of maybe think, of, think once just about the vibrato you're doing. Nice, I like that. You took a little time there. So that's what I mean about when you're practicing of trying something. Right there, you didn't play it that way when you played it earlier. You took a little time. And those things like, oh, that makes the piece more interesting, with all due respect, than what's there. And I think that Max, if I may call him that, would be happy with that that you, you fooled around with this piece. So I think we're going to have to stop, but I want you to listen to that serenade by Max Rager, and you'll see a really silly piece. And it will, maybe will uh, be helpful for this, but thank you for your excellent playing. Thank you. Thank you.